everyone. My name is Marisa Stone with Simon Says Social and the Systems Lounge, and I want to welcome you to the 2017 Business Systems Virtual Summit, where you learn all about the business systems our speakers use to get things done. And I'm super excited to have Suzanne White here to talk all about stress-free social media management. This is a big topic for a lot of people because, you know, how many of us have like this social media team right on the other side of that door ready to do all our stuff for us? Well, today we are really going to tap into some ways to make this easier on you and super stress free. Suzanne is a featured co-author of the recently released international bestsellers, The Voyage to Your Vision, My Creative Thoughts, Ready, Aim, Thrive, and My Big Idea book, as well as several children's books. She regularly addresses groups as an inspirational speaker and marketing how-to strategist. Her company, My Business Tweets, empowers business owners to escape the bright, shiny object syndrome, marketing madness, and focus on practical solutions to grow their business through strategy, consultations, educational programs, and done-for-you services. It is so fantastic to have you here today, Suzanne. I am super excited to dive into some stress-free social media management. How are you? Fantastic. I'm having a great day. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. So let's just begin at the beginning. What in the world is social media management? Well, basically, in a nutshell, we use social media to listen, interact, engage, collaborate with others but we have to have sort of a plan. Right. So management involves creating a system yeah. to do that in a way that's consistent with your brand. Nice, very nice. And, and also um, manage the chaos that can be the social space. Yes, I, I, <laughs> I hear that all the time. You know what, I don't even know what to do. Right, and, right. You know, you just gotta start somewhere. You gotta start somewhere. So. Let's talk about that for a minute. Why should entrepreneurs be concerned with social media at all? Well, one of the things that you got to pay attention to is that social media is often the first time that somebody experiences your brand. And what I mean by that is if you Google your name, chances are your social media profiles pop up first. Yep. And so guess what somebody's going to click on first? Yeah. If they like Facebook, they're going to click on your Facebook one. If they like LinkedIn, they're going to click on your LinkedIn profile. Yeah. Um, so that's what they're going to look at. So when they go there, they want to see what you represent. Yeah. And so if your last post is from a year and a half ago, they probably think you're out of business. Yep. That would make sense. I can totally see that. And so that's why we need to really pay attention to what we're putting out there because chances are that's the first impression somebody's going to get from us. Right, right. Yeah, that, no, that totally makes sense. I, I never really thought about that being the first impression, but you're dead on. That's totally right. So along that kind of conversation, how can managing my social media impact my bottom line? I mean, that's what this is all about, right? Yes, and, and the whole point of social media, uh, we know we hear, oh, it's all about engagement. Well, it depends on what type of engagement you're looking for. Right. As a small business owner, the type of engagement I'm looking for is people to buy my products. Right. <laughs> I mean, that, that's it in a nutshell. Right. Is that, that's what you need to be looking for as a small business owner. Yeah. You know, if you're AT&T, yeah, maybe you use social media to, for customer service. Right. But as somebody who has a hundred thousand dollar a year or less business, yeah. chances are customer service is not the point of your social media. Right. Your social media is to build relationships, mm -hmm. even those relationships. So by using social media, you can use the messaging through like Facebook Messenger or direct messages on Twitter or your messages through LinkedIn to really connect with people. It's not really about your posts to build your bottom line. It's about those connections that you're going to make. Right, right. Absolutely. So talking about those connections, how can I truly engage with my audience using social media? You mentioned Messenger, you mentioned posts, but... How does, that, how does that create engagement with my audience? Well, part of it is if you see somebody, and 
I know everybody gets all hung up on those wonderful likes. <laughs> oh, please never, never like my stuff. I'm not interested in you liking my stuff. I want you to share my stuff. Right. Click the share button. Right. A like is not a favor. Right. So when somebody clicks the share button with you, if they've shared a couple of your posts, send them a message. Yeah. Say, hey, you know what? Thank you so much for, yeah. you know, taking the time to share my message with your audience. Mm -hmm. because then they're going to have a favorable impression of you. Right. It's not enough to go in there and like stuff that they've done because we all know a like is useless. Right. <laughs> We're not in high school. Right. You know, right. I, I, don't, I remember one time I changed my profile page and within 10 minutes I had like 100 likes on my profile page you know, for my picture. And I'm like, so what? It's just a photo. You all know what I look like. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And I think likes, you know, back in the day, likes were a big thing and everybody wanted them. And today they really don't, they really don't impact anything. So therefore they're not as useful. Right, and when somebody shares you, right, then the social, you know, the search engines see right. that. Right, so that helps your business. Right. So tell all your friends, <laughs> share your stuff instead of liking it. Your call to action should be share this. <laughs> share it, yes. It's very cool, very cool. So, how does social media management build my brand loyalty? Well, part of that is once again, that's the first look that they get. Right. But then you need to have consistency. Mm -hmm. So let's say, for example, you do, I have, I have one of my clients, she does a weekly video on Thursday. She calls it a thirsty Thursday. Right. And she does a wonderful video of giving them some productivity tips. Right. Well, what happens if on Thursday there's no video? Right. Well, you know what? That has just affected mm -hmm. your brand loyalty. Yeah. Because there will be some of your followers who specifically turn in on Thursday mm -hmm. for that video tip. Yeah. Or your monthly blog. You know, and it doesn't have to be a weekly. It could be a daily thing. Right. It could be a monthly thing. Whatever it is, mm -hmm. when you commit, make sure that you're going to be able to uh, deliver right. on that promise. Because that's what they're going to see on the social media. Going back to the person that posted a year and a half ago. Right. Or they post 15 posts in a week and then they don't post again for another month. Right. That type of social media management is detrimental to yeah. your brand and it's not going to increase your brand loyalty. Yeah, that, that totally makes sense. So let's get into kind of some meat and bones of, of managing our social media. How would you like, what would be a simple strategy that I can use to manage my social media without spending hours upon hours upon hours in front of my computer <laughs> my suggestion everybody is just to start with basic time blocking yeah so a you should not be on every single social media channel you need to be on the ones that your that your followers are on or if there's one that you really like yeah. Like, for example, my business is called My Business Tweets. Right. Can Hello. you guess which <laughs> social media I like to be on? <laughs> well, and I know for a fact that I get more activity from Facebook. Right. But Twitter is the one that I hang on. Right. So that's the one that I spend time with. Doesn't mean I ignore Facebook. Right. I still post to Facebook and I log in, but I log in once a day. Oh. And I check my messages. Mm -hmm. I check my business pages. Yeah. Um, I actually quit reading my Facebook feed about two years ago. <laughs> it's been a while now. I used to say a year, but I think it's been closer to two now. Yeah. Uh, because you don't want to get sucked into that time suck. Yeah. And honestly, most of what the people post, if I, if I can't catch it other ways, I'm not going to see it in my feed. Especially right. with Facebook, right? Because Facebook has the, uh, their algorithms, and I never like anything. I yeah. will share your stuff, but I never like your posts. Yeah. So yeah. If I don't like it, they don't show it to me. So and just of, because it's there, you don't have to read it. I think a lot of people get caught up in that, right? There's the noise, you know. Yes. Oh my gosh, it's here, so therefore I have to pay attention. No, you really don't. <laughs> um, what I do mainly on Facebook is I've, I'm part of a few groups. Right. And once again, this goes back to deepening that relationship. 
Right. So I'm in groups for the networking groups that I belong to. Mm -hmm. I'm in some groups for um, social media. I'm in some groups for a couple of other things. And so when I go in, because once again, I don't read my feed, I just go to my groups. Yeah. Once I've checked my messages and such, I hit my groups, see what's going on. Um, I recently got a new client just from a comment they happened to make mm -hmm. in a group yeah. that I responded to. And I'm like, oh, hey, you know what? That might be something I can help you with. Yeah. Here's my information if you have any interest. Reach out. And yeah. she contacted me. I've never met her. Yeah. She's in an entirely different state for me. Yeah. But because I am active in the groups mm -hmm. versus trying to read what's in my feed. Right. Right. So definitely um, aligning your priorities inside the space that you are in. Like if your goal is to, you know, connect with 10,000 people, that's one thing. But if your goal is to get business and yes. work with people, then what I'm hearing you say is spend your time doing that. Yes. Yeah. Now, you know, on, on Twitter, I read my feed every day. Yeah. Because that's the one where I like to be. Right. But, but and so you just got to figure out the one that you like to be on. You're going to be more active in. Yep. But the other ones you still go in and you show up and you represent. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. So definitely um, aligning your priorities and and time blocking are two big ones for managing your social media yes. and getting rid of all the stress. That makes a lot of sense. Are there ways that I can automate? There's like several different camps and it's a very controversial subject, whether or not you should automate your social media. Like the reality is, is nobody cares, but still people, people choose a camp. Are there ways in which to automate your social media? I am firmly of the automate your posts. Yes. And personalize your connections. Boom. So <laughs> if you post once a day, use Hootsuite or Buffer to program that in. Yep. Um, I do it once a month usually. At the beginning of the month, I do the entire month out. I never worry about what gets posted again. Yeah. But that frees me up so that when I go into Facebook or I go into Twitter or I go into LinkedIn, I am completely concentrated on what my tasks are. Right. While I'm in there, you know, so when I go onto LinkedIn, you know, I check, I look at my feed a little bit in there because I like to share a lot of stuff on, on LinkedIn. Right. Right. And so, so you go in a little bit and, and by, by automating those posts, because are you going to be in front of your computer every day at 12 o'clock or every day at three o'clock or whatever time you want your posts to go? Or if you're one of those people that post 50 times a day, right. You know, there's no way. Yeah. that you're going to be able to do that. So yeah. automate the posts and personalize your connections. That's a great idea. So what about how often I should be posting? Is there kind of a rule of thumb? A lot of that depends on the social media that you're on. Mm -hmm. um, Twitter, you could post a million times a day because most people, unlike me, <laughs> Do not read back. Like I start on my Twitter feed where I left off the day before. Right. So I have, so I read everybody, but right. I only follow a certain, you know, I only have so many people on that list right. that I read everybody. You know, I don't, I of course don't read every tweet that everybody I follow right, right, does right. because some of them, you know, they're not, I'm not that connected to them. Right. But um, on Twitter, you know, people look and they just see what's right there. And Facebook is actually kind of the same way too. Mm -hmm. So chances are none of your followers are hanging on your every word. Right. So if you post four times a day, they might see one. Right. So they don't know that you're post posting four times a day. Right. Um, on LinkedIn, it might be a little bit more noticeable. So maybe you don't want to post four times a day on, on LinkedIn. Right. Maybe you want to post once a day or once every other day. Um, but it really depends on which social media you're on. Yeah, that totally makes sense. What kind of stuff should I be posting? Depends on what your object, your, I just lost my word. Well, I guess it would depend on your audience and what your goals are. Yes, your goals. Yeah. That's, that's the short word. That wasn't the word I was looking for. Yeah, objectives was probably was Objective, that was the word I was trying to say. <laughs> I Don't guess. you hate it when that happens? <laughs> so whatever your objective was. So right. for example, 
if my objective is to get people into my workshops, I'm going to post content about my workshops. Right. So maybe it's going to be like, for example, I'm doing stress-free social media management. Right. Maybe I'm going to create 50 tips. Right. So then my posts are going to be 50 tips and there is going to be a link to my class where they can sign up. Yeah. Because my biggest peeve about somebody is they ask me to do something and then they don't give me a link to go do it. And they don't tell you how. <laughs> yeah. You know, if your objective is to get more followers, mm -hmm. um, which I always think is a bad objective, um, but that's a blanket objective that a lot of people do. Right. If that is your blanket objective, I just want more followers. Mm -hmm. Then what you want to do is you want to, concentrate on is it entertaining mm -hmm. what's the value that they're going to get out of it of course of course you think that of always right you know even even for for your ones for right. your regular clients they're going to be yours but when you're looking for just sheer followers it's what's going to make the biggest impact right. what's going to be shareable what's going to make somebody click that share button and get it in front of their audience right so that then maybe some of those people will look at me and be like oh wow Hey, this is really cool. Right, right. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Yeah. And then and then if your objective is, you know, maybe you are a big company and your objective is simply to do cus you know, to use social media as an outreach for customer service. Mm -hmm. And God bless you that you're that big already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if but if that that's what it is, then you know, your posts are going to be about how to contact us. Yeah. Do you have a problem? Right. Please, please reach out to us. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the type of stuff you're going to do. So it's going to follow in what your objectives are. Right. And that will change. Right. Depending on what you're doing. You know, if I'm doing a, a seminar, well, the seminar is going to get over. Right. So what's, what's, what's going to be my new objective right. when that's finished? Yeah. And that also changes as your audience evolves. One of the things that I've noticed is as my audience goes through multiple programs, they evolve into needing, you know, something that was completely different than what I started posting. And so that's another component of that is listening to your audience and knowing what they're looking for and what they're needing. Yes. Yeah. And, and we got to remember that who we really want to talk to are our clients. Yes, absolutely. And, and, I, and we want to attract new people. But the people that we really want to interact with us are the people that are paying us. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm happy to, to provide, I write blogs, I do videos. I'm happy to provide that out there for everybody for free. Yeah, absolutely. But when I'm on my social media, I'm talking to my clients. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. That makes a total, that makes so much sense. So I know we're sort of coming to the end of this first interview, but what else do we need to know about managing our social media? Um, I have two big, you got to do this. One is do not be afraid to disconnect. Uh -huh. um, those apps on your phone are evil. <laughs> I have no better word for it. They're evil. <laughs> they suck your life away. Shut it off. Yeah. You know, go to Facebook. Don't use the app. Go to their website on your phone. Yeah. Yes, it's an extra step, but yeah. you know what? You don't get the notifications then all the time because when you click X, yeah. it closes. Yeah. You know, you don't get it with Twitter. You know, right. shut it off. Do yeah. not be do not think that it's the fear of missing out. Yes. I think is what it is. Everybody's afraid that if I'm not on all the time. I'm going to miss that important something yep. that would completely change my business. My life. <laughs> and, and you know what? Could it happen? Yes, it could. Is it likely to happen? No. No. Chances are very, very good that that person who sent you the message eight hours ago right. is still going to be happy that you, that you messaged them back, yep. even if eight hours passed. Right, right. And then the other thing is make it fit your schedule. Yes. That is the great thing about using like the programming for your uh, posts is mm -hmm. because you can do it on a Sunday or whatever day that you've got an extra hour or two. You do the whole month at once. Yeah. You're done with it. And then when you log in, um, if Facebook, if you find out that Facebook is a trap for you, because some people just can't stop. 
Right. They get on there and it sucks them down. Do it at the end of the day. Yeah. When I used to read my feet, I always did it at the end of the day just because I hated it so much. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, it will suck the life out of me early in the morning. Yeah. So I always, you know, so now that I have a different system with it, I go into it in the morning and I'm fine. Yeah. But find out the best time of day for you. If you can't get out of that time suck, make it the last thing you do every yeah. day. That's and okay. ignore it for the rest of the day. Yeah. Yeah. You want stress free? Here's how you get it. <laughs> Okay, so I know we're at the end of this particular part of the interview. If you are part of the All Access Pass, you definitely want to stick around because we are going to take a much deeper dive into managing your social media in a stress-free way so that we can eliminate all that chaos in your life and you can get on with doing what you do best. But before we go, Suzanne, can you tell people how can they reach out to you? Um, you can go to my website, which is mybusinesstweets.com. Yep. And I also have a freebie, which is the top five social media killers, how to and avoid link, them. And that link is below. Yep, that one. You go to stopthesocialmediamadness.com for that. Mm -hmm. And um, Twitter is my favorite. So <laughs> follow me on Twitter and send me a direct message. There you, you go. can find me on Facebook, but just know if you send me a message. It might be a few hours before I respond. Right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Suzanne. I really, really appreciate all that you've shared, and I cannot wait to take a deeper dive with you. See everyone in the next interview. Bye.